In this video, I'm going to show you how you can download a MIDI file and then import it into GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. So if that sounds like your kind of bag, consider subscribing. We are back here in GarageBand iOS on the iPhone or the iPad and I'm going to show you not only how to download and import MIDI files into GarageBand because it is a cool way to get some different kinds of sounds into your projects. I'm also going to tell you some of the faults and flaws and foibles that MIDI importing has because GarageBand MIDI importing is not without its problems. So let's dive in now and show you how it's done. Step one for downloading and importing a MIDI file is to find a MIDI file. So I'm here at midiworld.com, one of thousands of MIDI download sites. And I've just searched Christmas because when I'm recording this, it's nearly Christmas time. All I need to do is find the download button for the song that I want to download. So let's just choose this one here. We're going to tap on download and it's gonna bring up our download option. Now, because I'm in iOS 13 or iPad OS 13 here, I've actually got Safari's download manager. So all I need to do is tap on download and up the top here, it's actually going to download that file into my downloads folder. Now, if you're on iOS 12 or earlier, it's a little bit trickier, but I've got another video linked up the top there that's gonna show you how to do that if you're on an earlier version of iOS. So that is downloaded now. Let's show you how we now bring that into GarageBand. So we're gonna swap over, we're gonna go back to GarageBand here and I'm gonna go and create a new song. So I'm gonna tap on the create new song. We don't really need anything here, but we'll tap audio recorder anyway, just so that we can go in here. So we can go to our track view by tapping in the top left here. Now to bring in a MIDI file like any other file, WAV files and um, MP3s and others, we tap on the loops icon here in the top right corner. So we'll tap on that one. And instead of Apple loops, we're going to select files over here. Now it's gone into my files location what I need to do is actually browse down the bottom here to import it from the files app. So I'm going to tap on this blue button at the bottom here. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. The easiest way is it'll land you right here in your recent tab and there it is. I could just tap that and bring it straight in. But just in case you want to know where it's stored, let's tap browse. And what we need to do is tap here in the top left on locations and make sure we select the downloads location. Now it's here under favorites. So if you scroll down below all of your other locations is downloads. We'll tap downloads and there it is. So all we need to do is tap on that one now. It will import it into our GarageBand file transfer folder. So all of these imported files are stored in your GarageBand file transfer folder. And now it is a simple matter of tapping and holding on the icon here and dragging it across. You'll get this little green box. And when we release on that one, it's going to expand out and there we go it's filled up all of our tracks GarageBand has chosen an appropriate instrument hopefully maybe for each of these and has assigned it all there so let's jump in and show you exactly what has happened here and point out some of the things that can go wrong when you do this process as well now this one looks like it's been reasonably successful. You can see here we've got our piano and we've got a melody line there. Strings, we've got piano there for a classical grand. This is supposed to be a guitar. It's a classic clean guitar. The bass is a bass. The glockenspiel is a glockenspiel. It has actually aligned these instruments very well. The reason that I say it has done a good job this time is it does not always do a good job. Sometimes you'll get some random instruments that are just thrown onto random tracks because MIDI is a bit of a weird one and garage GarageBand doesn't have a lot of smarts behind how it actually imports MIDI. So sometimes some of the common things you'll get, especially drums, if it brings the drums in on a keyboard track, it's not going to work and there's no way to transfer it back to drums. So here we have the drums. If we hit play on this one, so thankfully our drums are on our drums and if we bring the whole mix together, we get an optimizing performance. Now, I wasn't going to keep this in, but just so that you know that sometimes this happens and it's happening right now. So you just need to sit tight and wait for the optimizing performance to finish and then we'll resume. Oh, and if you want to find out why optimizing performance is even a thing and what it's doing, check out the video up the top and in the description. Okay, performance has been optimized. It's ready to play. Let's hit play. 
and that's all I can play because I have no idea if this is a copyrighted song or not. It may well be. I, I chose Christmas Carrollton in hindsight. That was a bad idea. Anyway, that is uh, that is all sounding okay. Pretty good song, and I have listened to it through, and it sounds pretty good. Got some different cool parts here. Let's just take a listen. So down here we got some strings that sound like this. Pretty cool, yeah. So you can get some good MIDI sounds in here. The piano is sounding good. Yep, so all the instruments have lined up, and that's a pretty good arrangement. If you wanted to then sing over the top or do whatever you want with this one, you could actually go ahead and do that. So nicely sequenced. It has imported successfully. It is all good. Why don't I show you one that's perhaps a little bit less successful, just so that you can see what can happen and why MIDI is far from perfect when importing into GarageBand. So back to MIDI tune, let's pick another one. Let's just uh, download this sucker here. We'll tap on that. We go to this screen here. We wait a moment. We hit download. It'll download that. There it is. It's done. It's in our downloads now. Same thing again. We'll switch back over to GarageBand. I've already got my nice fresh track set up here. So all we need to do is tap on the loops icon in the top right there. Go to files. Tap on our browse button down the bottom. And this time we'll use the shortcut of just using our recent items. So we'll tap recent on the left here. And there it is. We'll tap it. It'll pop it into our GarageBand file transfer folder. And there it is. Now all we need to do is tap and drag and bring it across. Release it in here and it will bring it in. Now while I'm waiting for this to actually put all the tracks out here, if nothing happens when you bring it here, so if it doesn't do that, that's actually reasonably common. Some MIDI files just are not supported. So it is very hit and miss and trial and error. If you're having frustrations, if things are not going in there, that's probably why it is just not going to work. Now, we've got some problems here, I think, because look at all these drum tracks that we have here. We've got a heap of different drum tracks. Maybe that is just all of our cymbals and drums. We don't really know. Uh, we've got some tuned gongs down here, apparently. We've got the bass, which maybe is the bass. We've got some French horn and some brass ensemble. This one seems altogether a little bit random. So why don't we come to a part here where it's all kind of playing, maybe down here, and see exactly what sort of sound we get. All right, brace yourself for this because it may not be pretty. Right? So, yeah, it's not all bells and whistles and roses and petals and uh, mixed metaphors. It's not always going to work really well. Some files will just come in and they'll sound atrocious, just like that. Now, I think still the right sort of instrument. So, at least if we just come in here, let's just check these drums and see if they're actually doing their thing. So, we'll hit play on these. And we get another optimizing performance. This one will probably not take too long. This is the problem again, because MIDI files, they are simple, but you'll notice there in the background, they're using a lot of automation because MIDI has a lot of different elements it can do. It can do velocity changes, it can do automation, it can do pitch bends, it can do all sorts of cool things. So bringing MIDI into GarageBand with a lot of tracks, especially on something like the iPad Air 2, can sometimes actually slow things down. So that's what's happened here. We'll wait again for optimizing performance and we'll come on back. Yeah, so I think it is actually supposed to be the symbols of the drums in this track. So that's not terrible, I guess. Um, but yeah, you can see some of the flaws that we have here around the optimizing performance, around the instrument selection, and around the fact that sometimes it just simply doesn't work. It doesn't import it at all. The other thing you notice, which you may notice, which I mentioned before, is the automation. So all of these have automation enabled. So you can see here where it fades up here, that's all using automation. So if you want to change that or turn it off, you can tap on the icon, tap on automation, and you can actually adjust those automation curves. And you can see that they're, they're pretty weird. This is why it is using so much processing power. Because look at those weird, um, all those different changes that are going up there. You, that's not a normal looking thing. It looks like it's been hand drawn in, doesn't it? So that is one of the problems there. We want to turn those off though. That's all we need to do. We just need to turn them off like that and they can be turned back on again. So yes, you can import MIDI and you can play around with it and then you can adjust the volumes in there. But it is far from ideal in its implementation. Hopefully we do get better MIDI importing in the future in GarageBand. But for now, this is what we're actually stuck with and this is the best that it can do. There's two more videos all about MIDI and GarageBand down below. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live today icon and I'll see you next time.